Hey everybody, this is Anthony with you again from Biblical Truth and Reality. And this is going to be part two of the topic, Where's the Pre-Trib Rapture? This is going to cover the latter part of the arguments given by professing Christians who believe in this pre-trib rapture nonsense. So let's proceed with the next argument. Next, number four. The church is conspicuously absent from Revelation chapters 5 through 19. Oh my, jeez. I can't believe I used to believe this garbage. So just because the word church does not occur from chapter 4 through chapter 19, that means it was mysteriously and magically raptured out in a divine disappearance. What? They'll also tell you that since John was part of the church, that he was called up to the third heaven in an instant by the command of God. So that represents the church being raptured out. What? Uh, no. The main problem is that these fake Christians want to make up this fairy story. John is in the church, therefore he represents the church being caught up by this magical rapture. You've got to be kidding me. The whole point of him being caught up to the throne of God was to write of what God was going to reveal to him in Revelation has nothing to do with the church being caught up as a so-called picture or type. Way too many pictures and fairy tale imaginations. How about Revelation 1, verses 11 and 19? Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto... Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Revelation 4, 1-2 through After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. As a side note, how about the man in Second Corinthians 12, 1-5, who was caught up to the third heaven in paradise, as Paul wrote? Hmm? So, this is a picture or type of the church being caught up. And the context is this happened in Paul's day. So another rapture must have happened at that time too. Do you see how stupid your argument is? Just because John was caught up to heaven, that doesn't mean that pictures the church going up before the tribulation. Are you crazy? I can't believe I believe this silly childish prattle. It's hilarious that people won't accept what the scripture literally says because they want to add pictures and types and imaginations in between the lines of scripture that are not there. Ah, oh, jeez. Next, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. One of the classic verses I used to use when I used to believe this garbage. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. What does this verse have to do with the events in Revelation and the Great Tribulation? These people claim that God is primarily dealing with the Jews in the Tribulation, especially since they want to reference to the 144,000 from the tribes of Israel. Problem. Revelation 7, 9 and 14. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Question. If God is primarily dealing with Israel, then what are these big group of people of nations and tongues languages. So God has a backdoor plan that's not as important as dealing with the Jews and they're just second class. Is that really what's going on? Not in the least. 
Nowhere in any passage of the Bible did God say he will be primarily dealing with the Jews in this tribulation time. Not one verse. If you read the scripture carefully, especially Romans 9-11, through you will see that the church is the true Israel, not those heathens over there in the nation of Israel of today. Lord willing, in the future, I'll be making a video entitled, The Church is the True Israel. <gasps> Reformed theology, Anthony, you're a heretic. Okay, think whatever you want, but the scripture teaches what it does, and it does teach the church is the true Israel. Lastly, if God is primarily dealing with Israel, the twelve tribes, during the Great Tribulation, then why does he bother to deal with this other big group of Gentiles being saved and washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb? See the verses I've given before. I've even heard this notion, and even used to believe this nonsense trash, that God is going to have two brides, Israel, and then he's going to marry the church. So God frowns upon polygamy in the Bible, but then he's going to do that himself? Uh, no, not at all. In that case, God is a double standard hypocrite. Alright, brethren, so that's all for this video. So now you see how ridiculous all these arguments are. These do not prove the pre-trib rapture at all. They make the pre-trib rapture look more foolish and silly. The next video is going to be about, as said before, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That will be interesting. So all of you take care, love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep His commandments, and read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks.